Creativity. When was the last time that you actually sat down and had a conversation with that side of your personality? Creativity. Those things that you want to bring forward, but somehow you keep bumping into this wall. Why? Ask the questions. Unplug because we will always say yes to creativity. Totally uncut because we all make mistakes. So turn it into a tool. This is Arrow Unplugged. I'm reading the new book from Julia Cameron, Write for Life. And what I love about it is that I feel like that I'm looking in a mirror. Julia Cameron has been a part of my life since 1994, July of 1994, when I picked up The Artist Way in Santa Barbara, California. So it's very interesting all these chapters later that I'm reading her latest book. And it's like we're living the same path. But the reason why we're living the same path is because Julia is my mentor when it comes to writing. I have cherished every moment and every single book. But she, she challenged me on something. And, and that is, is that when you get an idea, write it down immediately. Now, of course, I've talked about that a million times, but what I try not to do is mix the morning writer with the nighttime writer because they have two completely different personalities. And the nighttime writer last night wrote on this sheet of paper, it says, unbelievably long, beautiful hair at 60. The hell is that all about? Because the next morning, here I am, and I write words written late last night without a reason for the subject. This is how the imagination works. So many creative people depend on their pages and digital devices to plant ideas and inspiration in places and spaces meant for a different time. Sadly, though, I'm without a reason as to why the writer last night felt a need to write unbelievably long, beautiful hair at 60. I'm not sure it's a self-portrait. I mean, I'm guilty of two accusations, 60 and long hair, but beautiful? Uh Uh-uh. Not so much, mainly because anyone with such length faces the daily battles of in your face, constantly getting caught in the zipper of your coat and laying on it late at night to pull your neck backwards. Not not so much fun. Takes the beauty right out of your long hair. Besides that, guys don't stand around talking about the length of their hair. Very rarely is it about fashion and style because so many men tie their hair back. I often wonder if they even remember if they've got the long hair or not. Hey, it's Arrow. This is The Daily Mess, a chronological walk through an everyday world. I am a daily writer. This is what I've been doing since my eyes fell into the artist way from Julia Cameron and continue to play with her new book, Write for Life. This is The Daily Mess. I'm going to bring up a word here, and I I really want you to think about this because I, I think this is a very serious subject that needs to be talked about in 2023 and beyond because what we lived in 2020 forward has basically been something that we we're all setting aside and we really don't give a damn and and i think that's got to change but the word i want to share with you is isolation it really feels like that it's got multiple definitions but when you go to dictionary.com it says it's the process or fact of isolating or being isolated okay let's break that down to isolate is to be or remain alone. Now, since March of 2020, isolation has been a word lived out. First, with the COVID lockdown, where we waited behind walls and windows, wondering if our names would be added to that list. We are the isolation burned out generation. While China is currently struggling with QBB 1.1, the rest of the world is turning its head. Here's the reason why I say that. A co-worker came to work not once but twice after being diagnosed with the new covid i can't get him to share his definition of what isolation means to him as an employee and the laws of privacy i'm not even supposed to know that he has covid twitter is forcing their employees back to work my question is simple what do you tell someone who has covid in 2023 and beyond How do you tell them you've got to stay away? This isn't the flu. This isn't a cold. COVID is still very serious. But here's what the law says. It has to be reported to local health departments and OSHA. In their heart, isolation, the definition, has not changed. I feel like a total ass. I'm not supposed to know that he's got COVID, but we do know. Because once word got out, we all began to protect ourselves. But the two days that I was with him, with the COVID, he knowingly had it, we had conversations. They were less than three feet apart. It's going to get nasty. 
And I, I'm not sitting here and I'm not being a Debbie Downer or a naysayer and I'm not trying to bring up some little political fight or anything like that. But people have rights. And the rights are that if you are confronted by a coworker, because these businesses, these corporations are forcing their employees to come back to work, no more remote learning, no more remote working, that we're going to be facing this. And once again, it's not the flu. It's not just a cold. It's not the measles. It's COVID. And according to the national laws, it's not me that did this, but you are to report it to health officials and or OSHA. Isolation means isolation. (sighs) What do you do? How do you do it? How do you make sure that you don't come across as the ass, the jerk? Oh, you little hypochondriac. But it's not. It's the truth. I'm Arrow, and that's The Daily Mess.